Understanding Women Part 2 Published on August 13, 2011, by Carl Donk This is the second part of my article on understanding women. If you haven't yet read the first part, I recommend reading it so that you can better understand the rest of this second part. I want to use this second part of my article on understanding women to go into more detail on some of the things I discussed in the first part. For people who are new to the theories of Dr. Freud and psychoanalysis, it may have been difficult to understand the connections I was making in my first article. I would totally understand if people would think what I was saying there was too far-fetched, or if they thought I was probably high on crack when I wrote that. Now, I'm not saying I wasn't high on crack while writing the first part, but even if I was, my arguments there are still based on some very interesting facts. Let me first bring your attention to the following quote from the first part. Quote, Thank God that vibrators, massaging devices, were invented or else those poor physicians would have to work a lot harder for their money. Couldn't they just tell those women to go have a lot more sex? I guess not, that would mean a loss of business for the physicians. Better to have the women come in regularly to get massaged. This is a good example of how protecting the financial interests of a few often holds back important progress in our society for the many. End quote. It's important to note that those physicians knew exactly what was going on. They knew the cause of the symptoms that the women they were treating were suffering from, namely, sexual dissatisfaction. It's also important to note that those women apparently had no idea what the causes were of the symptoms they were experiencing, because otherwise they'd probably know what to do and not need the physicians. But the physicians kept quiet about the cause because they were more interested in making money than doing society a favor by telling everyone exactly what was going on. You'll probably say that they kept quiet maybe because it wouldn't have been politically correct to send women out to have more sex at the time, and that the physicians were afraid of putting their jobs in jeopardy. But I think the financial motives had a lot more influence in keeping them quiet about the real cause. Why? Because they had at least one other alternative, namely, sending those women to midwives for treatment. Quote, the technique was difficult for a physician to master and could take hours to achieve hysterical paroxysm. Referral to midwives, which had been common practice, meant a loss of business for the physician. A solution was the invention of massage devices, which shortened treatment from hours to minutes, removing the need for midwives and increasing a physician's treatment capacity. End quote. And though they had that option, Instead they wanted to benefit financially from the psychological issues women were having, and looked for better ways to be able to treat these women themselves. The money isn't in the cure, but in the treatment, you'll come across this more, once you start investigating issues in the healthcare industry today. And that was around 1870. So some people had a pretty good idea of what was going on in society even at that time. Freud came up with his theories in the early 1900s. You'd think that if we knew this long about these issues, that we'd already have done something about them after all this time. But as I've shown with the physicians, people seem to be more interested in exploiting the problems, instead of solving them. And there are more examples of that. Years ago, I saw a documentary titled, The Century of the Self. If you haven't seen it yet, I can't recommend it to you highly enough. You should be able to find it on YouTube. It explains the theories Freud came up with, which I've used to explain women's irrational behavior in the first part of this article. And it shows you how these theories are now being used by the few to exploit the many and benefit from it. Instead of addressing the problem of large-scale sexual repression in society, these people choose to keep it the way it is so that they can tap into the irrational forces it creates inside individuals to control and manipulate them to forward their agendas, and or for economic profit. That's where the term, social engineering, discussed in the first part of this article comes from. For example, you'll learn from the documentary how women were manipulated into smoking in public. Quote, 
Bernays believed that there is a lot more going on in human decision-making than just the clear presentation of accurate information about the product or service. He believed that businesses should play to people's irrational emotions in order to convince them that they must buy a company's product or service. His first big success was persuading women that it was okay to smoke in public. At that time, in the early 20th century, men had made it taboo for women to smoke in public. George Hill, the president of the American Tobacco Corporation, asked Eddie Bernays if he could find a way to break this taboo and encourage women to smoke in public. George Hill thought his company could double the number of its customers in this way. Edward Bernays consulted with his uncle, who told him what cigarettes mean to women. The psychoanalyst told Bernays that the cigarette represented male sexual power, cigarettes were a symbol of the penis, and that if he could find a way to link cigarettes to women, as a challenge to male power, they would begin smoking in public. Every year, New York City held an Easter's Day parade to which thousands of people came. Bernays decided to stage an event there. He persuaded a group of rich debutantes to hide cigarettes under their clothes and join the parade. Then, at a given signal from him, they were to light up the cigarettes dramatically. He then told the press that he had heard a rumor that a group of suffragettes were going to protest the unequal rights of women by lighting up cigarettes, which they called torches of freedom. Edward Bernays knew that this would cause a controversy, and that all of the newspaper photographers would be there to capture the moment, so he was ready with a propaganda slogan which was, Torches of Freedom. The idea worked exactly as planned, and the next day the photographs and story were in not just the New York newspapers, but in newspapers all across America, and around the world. After that, the sales of cigarettes to women began to rise rapidly, because Bernays had made them socially acceptable. In the minds of the women who began smoking in public, they thought of themselves as being more powerful and independent. An idea that still persists to this very day. End quote. In the documentary, it is made very clear that the hidden irrational emotions that are being tapped into are linked to the primitive sexual forces, our natural sexual desires, in every individual. And as I have argued in the first part of this article, if these primitive sexual forces get suppressed, strange things start to happen. People start to behave strange and irrationally. And as I have also argued, all of us, but especially women, get trained and brainwashed from early childhood to suppress our sexual desires to the point where we don't even realize anymore that we are actually suppressing our sexual desires, something that is referred to as sexual repression. So we unconsciously suppress these sexual desires and though we're suppressing them, these desires are still there. We just aren't, fully, aware of them anymore. They are often driving us crazy, but we don't know or realize what's driving us crazy, such as in the case of women. And the documentary shows how the few in the know, and in control, tap into these unconscious desires to, for example, drive consumerism, making people want to buy things that they don't need, or making people do things that they wouldn't normally do. Remember what I said about women's seemingly insatiable desire for clothes, shoes, jewelry, and related items. Quote. And before I end this post, did you ever wonder what's up with women's seemingly insatiable desire for clothes, shoes, jewelry, and related items? It's like they can never have enough of those. By now you probably already have a pretty good idea why this is the case. But in case you don't, Here's the answer, they are simply compensating for their chronic lack of sexual satisfaction. Because it's very difficult for them to satisfy their sexual desires, they try to compensate for it by focusing their attention on other things that make them feel better about themselves in order to get some kind of feeling as if they are getting the satisfaction they need. But this never works for the long term because the root problem keeps existing, namely, their repressed sexual desires keep longing for satisfaction. So women find themselves in a situation of perpetual discontent. So by the time they get the new shoes they've been longing for, they are already looking to get the next pair. End quote. So this whole fucked up mess in our society is being kept in place 
on purpose, so that the few who are in the know, and in control can easily control and manipulate us so that ultimately they can benefit from it. I didn't come up with the theory about understanding women, myself. All I did was put together information that's been around for hundreds of years already and try to make sense of it. So essentially we've known for a very very long time now exactly what the causes are of all the issues we're having in our society. But we're just not willing to fix those issues. Benefiting from them seems to be more important to us. Or at least to the few who know and are in control. They are using the rest of us who don't know about this as resources. So essentially we are their slaves in these modern times. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that although the documentary The Century of the Self is about Dr. Freud's theories and about propaganda, the documentary itself is also propaganda and also contains lots of disinformation. For example, in the beginning of the documentary the narrator says, quote, "A hundred years ago a new theory about human nature was put forward by Sigmund Freud. He had discovered primitive sexual and aggressive forces hidden deep inside the minds of all human beings forces that if not controlled led individuals and societies to chaos and destruction end quote this of course is bullshit the natural sexual desires that every individual is born with don't lead to chaos and destruction themselves it's the suppression and repression of these desires that is dangerous and that can lead to chaos and destruction it is the desire to manipulate these forces that leads to chaos and destruction and our society is proof of that quote the history books have shown us that repressing human sexuality very often leads to a loss of perspective dangerous compulsions and inhuman behavior for centuries the catholic church has sought to repress human sexuality and encouraged its brethren to abstain from sex millions of priests and members of the clergy have been forced to suppress their natural sexual urges over the years which has undoubtedly led to an untold numbers of cases of sexual abuse against vulnerable children the act of sex whether through masturbation or intercourse helps to dissipate sexual energy which is why a person usually feels a great sense of serenity and relaxation in the aftermath of an orgasm Victims of sexual repression or anyone who is unable to have an orgasm will be unable to find relief and over time their sexual energy builds up and can cause deep-seated feelings of frustration and anger. End quote. In that same documentary you'll see how they used these forces to manipulate people into going to war causing lots of death and destruction. They would have us believe that they are doing a good thing for us by controlling these forces. when in fact it is their control and manipulation of these forces that causes a lot of the suffering that we see around the world today the way edward bernays manipulated americans into going to war by telling them it was to spread democracy you'll see this in the documentary is still being used today to fight wars you'll also hear the narrator saying quote but what frightened the rulers of the empire even more was Freud's idea that hidden inside all human beings were dangerous instinctual drives. Freud had devised a method he called psychoanalysis. By analyzing dreams and free association, he had unearthed, he said, powerful sexual and aggressive forces which were the remnants of our animal past. Feelings we repressed because they were too dangerous. End quote. This again is nothing but a big pile of bullshit. disinformation at its finest first they again want us to believe that the sexual forces inside us are dangerous the sexual forces themselves aren't dangerous it's the suppression and repression of those forces that is dangerous if people can't satisfy their natural sexual desires they are going to start acting strange and in extreme cases become violent the same thing would happen when people wouldn't be able to satisfy their hunger because of limited food supplies they would start getting violent to satisfy their hunger in extreme cases they also want to brainwash us into believing 
that we're repressing these sexual feelings ourselves because they are too dangerous. This is of course to make us believe that it's actually a good thing that we are repressing our sexual desires just in case we find out about it. Because if we know that it's bad to repress those feelings, then we stop repressing those feelings, and then as a result, they can't manipulate us anymore. In addition, we're not repressing our sexual desires ourselves, they are making us do it by keeping in place, and even enhancing, the system of brainwash that exists to do it. Do you start to see the connections, and why they are spreading all of this disinformation? In fact, Freud himself warned them about the serious consequences of repressing our sexual desires. Quote, It is another aspect of Freud's work that has had the greatest impact on human life in the West during the 20th century, his reevaluation of the role of sex and sexual behavior. Freud taught that sexual repression was the chief psychological problem of mankind. He surmised that repression and constriction of sexual behavior in youth would become manifest in adulthood. Where Western society, often under the guise of Christian morality, had long treated sex as a taboo subject and covered over both normal and abnormal sexual behavior as sin, or at least shameful, there had been great neglect of appropriate help and correction. Freud was able to persuade his opponents and admirers alike that sexual repression was rampant, unhealthy, and the indirect cause of much crime, illness, and woe. End quote. See the disinformation again. In the documentary, they are telling us that Freud thought the sexual desires or forces themselves were dangerous, but what we see here, in fact, is that in reality Freud thought that repressing these desires or forces is what was dangerous. And if you think about it, that makes sense. When our desires get satisfied as human beings, there's no need for conflict and all is well. It is when we can't satisfy these desires, and especially when our lives depend on the satisfaction of these desires, when all hell breaks loose. And nothing is more threatening to us as a species, as denying us our rights to satisfy our sexual desires, which threatens reproduction, which is essential to our survival. Remember that Freud established sexual drives as the primary motivating forces of human life. So if you mess with that, things will indeed get dangerous. So be careful with how you interpret the information in the documentary, and in fact, from everywhere around you. There's a lot of disinformation everywhere around us these days, and that's just something you have to keep in mind constantly. Fortunately, it's often easy to detect disinformation because it will usually try to make you believe the exact opposite of the truth. It's like Alice in Wonderland. In fact, that's exactly what Alice in Wonderland is based on. Remember that in the Matrix movies, Neo had to go down the rabbit hole to get to the real world. Right now, we are not in the real world. The real world is the opposite of our understanding of our current world. It's interesting that in the MK Ultra Mind Manipulation Program, they had a theme based on Alice in Wonderland. Read the book Trance, Formation of America, for a detailed explanation of how that worked. Remember how I said that fairy tales were used to brainwash and control us in the first part of this article. Isn't it interesting how far research can lead us when we just wanted to explain the irrational behavior of women? As you can see, there's a lot more to explore, but I'll leave those for follow-up posts in the future. Meanwhile, I encourage you to do your own digging to find out just how deep the rabbit hole really goes. Thank you for listening. This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know, those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.